Let A, B, C, D, E be a cyclic quadrilateral such that A, B to B, C to C, D to D, A is 1, 2, 6, 2, 3, 2, 4. Moreover, let E, F, and G be the midpoints of B, C, C, D, and A, D respectively. So we have A, B, so let's call this A, let's call this B, then C, D. So we have a cyclic quadrilateral that looks something like this. And we know the ratio of the side lengths is 1, 2, 6, 2, 3, 2, 4. So this is 1, 6, 3, then 4. And we also know that E, F, and G are midpoints of B, C, C, D, and A, D. So E, F, then finally G. And what do we want to find? Letting E, F, G be data, we want to find the cosine of data that can be written as A over B, and we wish to find A plus B if A over B is an irreducible fraction. So we want to find the cosine of this angle E, F, G. So let's mark it data. So our final answer should be cosine of data. And I'm going to present to you three different proofs for this question. The first one using very known parallelogram. The second method using cosine addition identity. And the final method, which I think is the most elegant out of the three, is going to use Ptolemy's theorem. And for the first two solutions, I will skip all the computation parts and leave it up to you because they are rather elementary but I will still point out important parts of the solutions such that after hearing my explanation, you can fill in the missing pieces, do the computation, and find the answer. But for the final method, we will cover it comprehensively, covering every single computation as well. Before we go on, I want to recognize Hung In Sun, who was the very first person to correctly answer this challenge problem with the answer of 16. Let's see if we can get the same answer as we work this out. So let's get started with number 1. Something you may say is that E, F, and G are midpoints of B, C, C, D, and A, D respectively. So why don't we put point H such that H is midpoint of A, B? So we are introducing asymmetry. And whenever you introduce symmetry in a mathematical problem, usually things get a lot better. And what's happening in this case? Well, we have a quadrilateral formed by connecting the midpoints of the sides. And this quadrilateral has a name, which is a very known parallelogram. And you may ask, how do we know EFGH is a parallelogram? That's not too hard to prove. Let's think about BD, diagonal BD. It's easy to see that EF is a mid-segment of triangle BCD. So we know EF is parallel to BD. And using the same reasoning for this triangle, triangle ABD, we see that GH is mid-segment of triangle ABD. So GH is parallel to BD. And that establishes that EF and GH are parallel. And you can do the same thing with diagonal AC to show that HE and GF are parallel. So yes, we do indeed have a parallelogram. And it turns out that the area of this very known parallelogram, so area of EFGH, is one half area of the original parallelogram, in this case ABCD. Let's quickly prove this too. Once we draw the diagonal BD, we see that area of HAG, this orange triangle, and let's call this X. We know area of X is one fourth area of ABD because triangle ABD has four axes inside. So we know X is one fourth this entire area. And using the same reasoning, we know ECF, I'll make this one green. So we know this area, and let's call it Y, is one fourth the area of entire BCD. So it's one fourth of this thing. So let's review really quickly that X is one fourth ABD and Y is one fourth BCD. That's telling us when you combine them, so X plus Y is going to be one fourth this entire thing, which is of course area of ABCD. And using the same reasoning with diagonal AC gets us that this Z and W, triangle BHE and GFD, when combined, gets us one-fourth ABCD. 
So when we combine x plus y plus z plus w, that's going to be one half ABCD, and to realize that the area of the Verignon parallelogram is area of the entire ABCD, and we are taking away x, y, w, and z. So when you take away one half ABCD from ABCD, we are going to get that the area of this parallelogram is one half ABCD. So we have proven this. And how does this help us out? Well, we know how to find ABCD because ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral and we are given the side lengths. Well, actually, we are given ratio of the side lengths, but we can treat the side lengths as 1, 6, 3, and 4 because cosine of data is going to be the same. In the case when we use 1, 6, 3, 4 and 2, 12, 6, 8, or any other multiple of 1, 6, 3, 4, because it's going to be proportional and the ratio is going to cancel out that scale factor. So we can let the side lengths be 1, 6, 3, 4, because it's proportional. And how does the cyclic quadrilateral nature of ABCD help us? Well, there's this nice formula called the Brahma Gupta's formula. That area of a cyclic quadrilateral is S minus A times S minus B times S minus C times S minus D where S is a parameter over 2, or semi-parameter. And in this case, A, B, C, and D are 6, 3, 4, and 1. So that's telling us that semi-parameter, when you add them up, you have 14, divided by 2 is 7. So area of A, B, C, D is going to be 7 minus 6 times 7 minus 3 times 7 minus 4 times 7 minus 1. And if you simplify this, 2 comes out and another 3 comes out, except you have square root of 2 left inside, so you're going to get 6 times the square root of 2. So we know area of ABCD is actually 6 times the square root of 2. And we also know, because EFGH is a parallelogram, the area of EFGH is going to be EF times GF, times the sign of data, area of a parallelogram is product of two side lengths, two adjacent side lengths, multiplied by sine of angle between them. That's one of the formulas for it. And we see that because EF is one half of BD and GF is one half of AC, this formula is equivalent to one fourth BD times AC times the sine of data. So the only thing left for us is how do we find a BD and how do we find AC? Because we know this entire thing is a 3 times the square root of 2. So once we find a BD and once we find AC, we can find the sine of data, which is going to allow you to find the cosine of data. So how do you find a BD and AC? Well, that's not too hard. You can draw AC and you realize that because ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral, letting this be alpha and letting this be a 180 minus alpha. And then we can apply law of cosines to triangle ABC and triangle ACD. And using the fact that cosine of 180 minus alpha, which we have, is a negative of cosine of alpha, you should be able to use the fact that AC is common in both triangles and how the law of cosines is formulated to find the cosine of alpha. And once you find the cosine of alpha, you plug that right back in to law of cosines equation for ABC, and that's going to allow you to find AC. And using the same reasoning, you can find the cosine of beta by using diagonal BD, and that's going to allow you to find the BD itself. And if you do work this out, you should get that cosine of alpha is one third, cosine of beta, is 7 over 11, AC is equal to square root of 33, and BD is equal to 9 times the square root of 33 over 11. And once you multiply AC and BD, you are going to get 9 times 33 over 11, also known as 27. So you are going to get 27 over 4 times the sine of data is 3 times the square root of 2, or the sine of data is a 4 ninths times the square root of 2. And using the fact that sine squared plus cosine squared gets you 1, you should be able to find the cosine of data is equal to 7 ninths, and you would be done. So that's how the first approach is going to work out if you utilize it. 
But let's go on to second approach. Using cosine addition identity, and this approach was used by Hung Hin Sun. Let me actually label E, F, and G in this new diagram. We want to realize that because A, C is parallel to E, F, this angle is also data. And because G, F is parallel to B, D, we know this line and this line or parallel. That's telling us that this angle is data, moving this over to this corresponding angle. And what we have found is that angle EFG, this data, is actually the angle between the diagonals AC and BD. And this very elegant fact is used in this solution and also in the final solution. Now realize that this angle data is an exterior angle of triangle BC and we can label the center point X. So we know this data is a sum of this alpha and beta. So we know data is alpha plus beta. This means that we can find the cosine of data. Once we know cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, sine alpha, and sine beta. And finding these values is just the matter of going through the computation involved with law of cosines. For example, you can find the cosine of alpha by applying law of cosines to triangle BCD. And you may say to apply the law of cosines to triangle BCD, we have to know the length of diagonal BD. But we know how to find length of diagonal BD. You can use the same reasoning as in the first solution to find that. So you can find BD, you can find AC as in the first solution, and use that to find cosine of alpha, cosine beta, then sine of alpha and sine of beta can be found using that. And we know how to find the cosine of data in terms of cosine and sine of alpha and beta. So we should be able to find the same answer. And if you're interested in the details, I highly recommend reading Hung In Sun's explanation. But now let's go on to a highlight of this video the method using Ptolemy's theorem. And the Ptolemy's theorem states, in a cyclic quadrilateral ABCD, AB times CD plus BC times AD is equal to BD times AC. And as we can see, we know AB, we know CD, we know BC, we know AD, but we don't know BD and AC in the beginning of this problem. And you may ask, why do we want to find a BD times AC? Well, that's because the area of ABCD is equal to one half AC times BD times the sine of data. And as we can see, AC times BD is the value we know how to find using Ptolemy's theorem. And we have actually proven this fact during this video when we were working with Ferrignum parallelogram because we have found that area of EFGH which is a one half area of ABCD. And we have simplified that this thing is AC times BD over four times the sine of data. And because we know area of ABCD is twice area of EFGH, it follows that our area is one half the product of the length of diagonals and the sine of the angle between them. If you forgot how we obtained AC times BD over 4 times sine of data, I recommend going back 5 minutes, 6 minutes, and looking at the proof once again. Or you may just know this formula by heart. Anyway, let's actually apply this. We know by Ptolemy's theorem that BD times AC, looking at these numbers, is 1 times 3 plus 6 times 4, which is 24, or 27. So that's telling us area of ABCD, which we know is 6 times the square root of 2 using Brahmagupta's formula. So we know 6 times the square root of 2 is equal to 1 half AC times BD, which is 27, times the sine of data. And simplifying this gets us sine of data is 12 times the square root of 2 over 27, or 4 times the square root of 2 over 9. And from here, finding cosine of data is easy. Using Pythagorean theorem, we get cosine of data is square root of 1 minus 32 over 81. That's a square root of 49 over 81, also known as 7 ninth. So the answer to this question, we know this entire thing turns out to be 7 ninth. So A over B is 7 over 9, A plus B is 16.